Lefty has become a slur across northern working class towns. Probably not just northern, exactly, in fact, but uh, I've only got an example from northern towns, so I figured we'd talk about it. So before we start, let's have a look at why. So this is the 2017 general election results. As you can see, the red wall at the top around Manchester, which is traditional Labour heartland, and slightly up in the northeast as well, traditional Labour heartland. And you can see how in 2019, the Conservatives absolutely, Boris specifically, I would say, specifically kicked their teeth in absolutely smashed it and so a bunch of labor sporting and some of these being always labor since the creation of these constituencies flipped to the conservatives and so the question is why why did that happen well uh currently just to so you're up to date uh current polls have the conservatives at a seven percent polling lead um but uh, that's not particularly comfortable, I would say, especially as I think it's gone down in recent days, but this just hasn't been updated by Politico yet. Um, but uh, you can see the Labour Party on the downward trajectory and the Conservative Party generally going up, though. <laughs> so even with the current uh, catastrophe in Afghanistan and the Conservatives copping flag, they're still beating the Labour Party. Well, it's hard to pin that on them. It, I mean, Tony Blair took us in, for starters. That's and also true, yeah. The Conservative Party, what like the Americans run foreign policy. Yeah, that's real politics. true. Uh, the, but the thing is, the, the media has been pounding Dominic Raab for being on holiday when Joe Biden did something arbitrarily and without our knowledge. Yeah. Not entirely his fault, again. Like, I, don't, I don't actually like defending the Conservatives these days because I'm actually annoyed at a lot of the things they do. But uh, in this, you can't really fault them. And When they've done nothing wrong, it, it's, well, it's hard yeah. to criticise them. Yeah, it is. But uh, but the point is, you can see that the Labour Party is completely failing and has been failing for some time. Uh, this is demonstrable. It's you know mappable. We can see exactly how many people they're failing with. And so the question is why? And I found this to be a really interesting article. Now, do you know who Sam Fender is? No. What kind of Zoomer are you? Not one. No, not a very good one. No, I mean, I'm literally, I don't fit in the category of Zoomer for my age. Oh, yeah, but you are age-wise a Zoomer. No, I don't think I'm in the bracket. I think it's over 2,000. Oh, you're a millennial? Then? Yeah, I'm 97. So. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so... See, he... I get a cop out. <laughs> oh, well, well, then you escape that. But uh, but anyway, Sam Fender, according to The Guardian, I've never heard of this person either, he's a Geordie. He's from the North, and he is also apparently one of the UK's best and most successful singer-songwriters. He uh, had a debut album in 2019, which went to number one, and he won a Brit Award. Uh, and now he's written a new album that deals with a great deal of politics. But of course, he's no political scientist, and so I guess we'll just go through some of the things he said and correct him where he's wrong and try and point out to him, look, there's a reason why people are opposing left-wing politics, and because you're very young and don't know anything about politics, that kind of explains why you're a lefty. Anyway, he, uh, he says, There's a problem with the polarity between the left and the right. I don't feel like I have an identity with politicians on either side. The left wing have abandoned the working classes, and with a lot of the left, I don't want to sound like Piers Morgan when I say this, I feel there is too much nitpicking and stupid fights, especially online. Wow, that's an understatement, isn't it? God. But I hate the Tories with a passion. I was raised to hate them. I still hate them and always will. So Why? you've been irrationally indoctrinated into hate. Why? I just hate, hate, hate. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate anyone. I've got no time to hate things. I've got things to do. Yeah, not really. It's, it's hard to have physical hatred, especially for a political party. I mean, embarrassment. I laugh mm. at them. I think they're a joke. I can <clears> think they're evil, but just to yeah. be so rational to the point that just anything to do with them, I hate. I mean, he literally says he hates them with a passion. He was raised to hate them. I still hate them, and I always will. Like, he, he mentions the word hate three times in two sentences. Like, good God, you know, there's, there's something wrong with you if that's the case. You shouldn't be hating anything. But uh, anyway, he says, they clearly know what they stand for, and they don't represent people like us. Well, why are the people like you voting for them? A quarter of the kids and working families in my region are in poverty. Nobody sticks their necks out for the Northeast. These are just typical Corbinite talking points, though. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the line in I, which is the single he's released, I don't have time for the very few. Uh, that's one thing that's always going to be my main gripe on this planet. It's another Corbinite phrase, though. It's another Corbinite phrase. The sheer disparity between the 1% and the rest of the world. Oh, shit, crap. I'll yeah, pull it okay. in my head. Yeah, yeah. Just full on Jeremy Corbyn Corbynism. If we kill all the rich, that'll solve all the problems. Yes. Another that's... mantra of socialism. And there will never be another 1%, trust me. Mm. Uh, these culture wars are valid wars that need to be fought. There's a lot of bigotry, a lot of racism, and homophobia but in order to get the tories out you've on, got to start representing the working class people of this country sorry there is not a lot of bigotry racism or homophobia no, by the polling yeah I, i'm sorry to say there are pockets of it and that exists and it's criminal sure. and may, maybe maybe in the northeast it's more f centralized maybe it's more localized 
Not by the polling. Um, well, no, but well, it's, said, it's centralised within cities of Birmingham and London. Okay, so. <laughs> may, may, maybe there are pockets of it in um, Geordie Land, where he's from, right? So it, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that he's never seen it or never experienced it or anything like no, that. No, no, because that's, that's why I say there are there are pockets yeah, and it's criminal. It may well be the case, but uh, but as I said, in order to get the Tories out, you've got to start representing the working class people of the country. But the thing is, like he's presenting it as if there's a contradiction between uh, representing the working class and the middle class politics of the Islington elite which there are, obviously. Uh, and he's failing to understand this and identify this, really, which I think is is disappointing. But anyway, he says, uh, the right is sitting back and laughing, sweeping up every election. Blythe Valley up here went Tory. It's a shipbuilding town. That's insanity. Working class people here think the Tories are on their side, which shows how completely the left have effed themselves. <laughs> well, that's true. And I'm glad that everyone can see that. And this is what happens when you end up with a party that's filled with people who support foreign interests over British interests. Mm. It's just, what did you expect was going to happen? Or uh, waste all their time with theory instead of actually helping families. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I love this. He says, I've had arguments with people who say that Jeremy Corbyn's a twat, regurgitating Daily Mail headlines that he's a terrorist sympathiser. I'm like, how? <clears throat> Tell me in your own words. And they go, ah, you're just one of them lefties. Which is ironic, because it's not hard to see at all how Jeremy Corbyn is a terrorist sympathiser. I mean, if we go to the next link, there's a Guido Fawkes article, which I you know, re regret having to cite Guido Fawkes. But this is just a great list of 100 times that Jeremy Corbyn has sided with terrorists. Yep. Number one, invite two IRA members to Parliament two weeks after the Brighton bombing, where they tried to blow up Margaret Thatcher and the rest of the government. In the 80s, it was. And Jeremy Corbyn was like, hi, can I bring these guys to Parliament? No, Jeremy, mm. you can't. It's like bringing Al-Qaeda to Congress after 9-11. Yeah, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. How's Jeremy Corbyn a terrorist sympathizer? Here we go. Lots. Uh, let me count the ways, right? He attended a bloody Sunday commemoration with the bomber Brendan McKenna. So with one of the bombers, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely sympathetic. Yeah, he'll argue I'm just standing against bloody Sunday. That's yeah, like... He, he said Hamas and Hezbollah were his friends. He attended a rally with Hezbollah and al mujarun He said ISIS supporters should not be prosecuted. He compared fighters returning to Syria uh, from Syria to Nelson Mandela. ISIS fighters in Syria, Nelson Mandela, basically the same. No difference. He said the death of Osama bin Laden was a tragedy and attended Al-Quds Day demonstrations in support of Israel, among many, many, many yeah. other examples. My personal favourite being refusing to condemn IRA bombing. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone's seen the clip where he's like, I, I condemn all bombing. Yeah. yeah, but the IRA bombing, you condemn that, right? He yeah. goes, I condemn all bombing. Yeah. Like, and right. then you've got his support for terroristic regimes like in Cuba and Venezuela, where he literally called Venezuela a model of social justice mm -hmm. until... The country descended into arbitrary killings and starvations and all this sort of stuff. So anyway, returning to the article, he says, Lefty is now a slur in working class towns. What happened there? That happened. Jeremy Corbyn happened. The fact that you guys decided to side against the United Kingdom and like actually support terrorists, that's what happened. Like, you can't sit there and pretend like it's not yeah. the case. Or the People abandonment with it. the name of your own party, the yeah. labour of the country. Yeah. The labour... Is no longer part of something that represents that party. Instead, it is minority groups or foreign interests. Or middle-class students. So it's the party of student politics, international politics, and like extreme left-wing ideological politics. That's why. You're not a, a party of Labour. The working man has got absolutely no interest in the Labour Party anymore, which is why they're voting Tory. What do you think the working man's opinion is on the 50th gender you've created this month? Yeah. What do you think the working man's opinion is of the destruction of Israel? Probably doesn't have one, to be honest. Probably doesn't think about Israel all that much, yeah. unlike the Labour Party, which thinks like, it non-stop. What's Israel got to do with my family? Yeah, exactly. What's Israel got to do with my job? Anyway, he says, It upsets me that we're in a place where the media have so much control over these blokes who have grafted all their life in a system that would benefit them if someone like Corbyn were in. Just totally delusional. Look at Venezuela, if you want an example of Corbyn's politics in action. Because Corbyn, like, he unironically phoned up Maduro a few years ago. Spoke to him in Spanish, congratulating him as a comrade on what he had done with the country. Like he was on Spa uh, like Venezuelan radio. It's like this. If you want to know what Corbyn would have done, that's the country to look at, right? Hmm. But anyway, the point is though, the media is also. I love the way it's. Oh, the media has got control of them. The media is half left wing and calls them gammons on a daily basis. Like the media isn't the thing that's showing them this. It's they can see Corbyn supporting all of the worst things. They live stream here the conferences, mm. in which you can just watch them. 
in mm. their own environment. What do they care comrades. about? And they're talking about the fact that comrades, we need to start talking about gender ideology. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. The pronouns, the racism, the this and that. And one of the most ironic things about it is, okay, let's assume there's a lot of racism, but you never address the racism that's going against the white working class in the north of England. Yep. Why would you? You know, you think that they are basically the same as the conservatives when it comes to ethnic identity and group identity. The fact that they share a race is important to the Labour Party these days, which is disgusting. It's, it's totally disgusting. It doesn't represent reality. And there's a huge amount of racism against the indigenous working class of this country, but you don't care because you're trapped in this kind of Corbynist mindset. And until you get out of that, I don't see how the Labour Party can, you know, regain its roots. And moreover, I don't think it deserves to. Thank you for watching this clip from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters. If you want more from us, please go over to lotuseaters.com and subscribe to get access to all the premium content that we have on the site. Yeah, we've got loads of really good stuff there. So we've been doing this for quite some time. So we've got a huge library of content uh, in various different categories. Now, some of my favorites have been the book clubs. I'm personally a big fan of these because it means we get to read good books and important books, extract the useful information out of them, such as with this uh, Roger Scruton's Where We Are, which is a very interesting conservative take on the current culture wars in the state of Britain at the moment. So we go through and explore the meaningful concepts. Uh, and here's one that uh, you and Bo did with Frank Dakota's Mao's Great Famine. It's absolutely brilliant and harrowing to read. And so when all the comments on this were happened to be, well, this was vile, uh, we knew we'd done a good job with it. And we also have many other premium series like The Contemplations, where Hugo and Josh uh, just go through and find something very interesting to talk about, such as this one. It talks about the idea of political representation and does it work or is it a bit of a myth? Uh, and of course, we have the history content, which probably my personal favourite uh, in this particular one. Myself and Bo talked about the achievements of Frankish warlord Charles Martel. Do you know what he's famous for, Callum? Stopping the Muslims at Tours. That's right. And uh, we also do a bunch of premium videos uh, which and interviews and things like this. So in this one, we happen to have an interview with Michael Malice, who's a very, very charming guest, and I very much enjoyed this one. And we also do a bunch of premium podcasts about stuff that perhaps isn't appropriate for YouTube or, uh, or various other platforms like that because of, you know, some things uh, outside of their editorial bounds. So if you'd like to get access to all that premium content, please go over to lodicees.com and subscribe for as low as £5 a month. Thank you. That was good. I love lashing labor. Yeah, me too. Labor. <laughs>